G'day guys, welcome back to the True Football YouTube channel. It's not called True Football, it's called True Footy. I don't know why I said that. Uh, as we get closer and closer to the 2023 AFL Draft, we're of course scouring the, uh, the news sources for little bits of tidbits of rumours, etc. as we get closer to finding out who our clubs pick. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is go through about five or six bolters, five or six sliders, uh, based on previous expectations of where players might get drafted in this year's draft. I've picked out a few players either side of the ledger who might actually be sliding down the rankings or potentially bolting up in the rankings as well as time goes on. As you would know, probably if you've been following the draft for a number of years, every year there's some sort of surprise where a player gets taken way earlier than expected, or in some cases way later than expected. So what I've done is I've picked a few players either side, like I said, who I think I have reason to believe might be dropping down or shooting up rankings as we get closer to the draft. Now, as I release this video, there's probably going to be more news closer to the draft. That's how these things work. A lot of the news comes late, in particular from Cal Toomey. But we're gonna go through what I know so far. If you could do me a favor before we get into the video, it appears according to my analytics that over the last 28 days, we've had 55,000 different people watch the True Footy YouTube channel. If you're unaware, I've set a bit of a goal of trying to get to 24,000 subscribers by the end of the draft. Now, that's 55,000 people. I have less than half of that in subscribers, which suggests that uh, quite a few people have watched the channel recently that are not subscribed. So long story short, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and help me hit my goal, I would forever appreciate it. Cool, so I'll structure this video going through some bolters and then I'll go through some players that we think might slide in this year's draft. So, starting off at the higher end of the draft, We'll talk about Caleb Windsor. Now, this is, might not be a huge bolter as such, but as time has gone on, as we get closer to the draft, we've seen this guy's perceived ranking shoot up a little bit over time, to such an extent that Cal Toomey actually referred to him as a possible or even likely top 10 prospect. Now, he's a 185 centimeter midfielder from Victoria, very, very damaging on the outside. One of my favorite players in this draft, actually. He sort of went from being sort of mid to late teens pick over the last few months to now potentially in the top 10. So looking at Cal Toomey's phantom form guide, he's been linked to GWS as an option. They do have two picks, seven and 16, which will become nine and 21, I think. So pick nine is probably the likely pick he'll be taking at. I don't think there's any chance he'll last until 21. Essendon, Melbourne, and Adelaide are also considered chances. So Melbourne do have a second pick. It might not be their first pick at pick eight, but it could be. But regardless, we've seen Caleb Windsor's stocks rise to such an extent that he is a chance to be taken inside the top 10, which is much earlier than we were thinking a couple of weeks back. The next bolter I'll talk about is Will Green, the 204 centimeter ruckman from Victoria. He's known as to be a pretty good center square ruckman, pretty good in terms of his contested ability, but also strong enough and balanced around the ground enough to impact on the outside as well. So this one is interesting. He's been considered probably the second best ruck in the draft for a little while now behind Gold Coast Academy player, Ethan Reed, And generally up to this point, he's been considered a first round prospect. So anywhere really in the side of the top 20, potentially even top 25, you'd think he wouldn't last past North Melbourne's five picks. But we are seeing increasing suggestion recently by Cal Toomey himself as well that Sydney are particularly interested in getting Will Green. And we do know they probably have a need for a young ruck on the list despite getting Brody Grundy in the trade period. Now Sydney's first pick is likely to be around the 15 or 16 mark if I'm not mistaken. The next picks are kind of accumulated points for uh, this academy player in Caden Cleary. So you wouldn't think that they're lining up Will Green with pick 40 odd or whatever their second pick actually is right now. So you'd think there is a legitimate chance that Will Green gets picked up by Sydney as early as pick 15 or 16. The third bolter I'll nominate is Charlie Edwards, another midfielder from Victoria. This time a little bit on the taller side. He's 191 centimeters and pretty balanced between inside and out, starts at center square stoppages, but can also really damage teams on the outside as well. Now, apparently, according to Toomey, mid-year, he wasn't really massively in draft calculations. I think he missed out on the Vic Metro side, but finished the year really well for Sandringham, particularly in the second half of the year, and that helped Sandringham win a premiership this year in the Coates Talent League. So, looking at where Toomey thinks Charlie Edwards could go, he says there's significant interest in Edwards from clubs, but his landing spot remains to be seen. Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and St Kilda are among the clubs to be linked. So, previously up to this point, Charlie Edwards, you know, even a few weeks ago, was considered a chance to maybe last into the late 20s, probably more likely early 20s. But now Toomey, who generally has some inside knowledge, is linking him both to Sydney, the club that I just mentioned, uh, who probably won't be able to take him with a second pick, and Melbourne, who currently only hold picks six and 11. So if you've got clubs like Sydney and Melbourne interested, 
That will suggest there's a genuine chance that Charlie Edwards goes in the top 15 of this draft. It would be a surprise. I like him on talent. I see the quality there, but it would be kind of against a lot of the phantom drafts that we're seeing at the moment, including my own. Then we're going to move to another Ruckman, this time Taylor Goad, who has become an increasingly more well-known player in this year's draft over the last few weeks, to be honest. He's 207 centimetres. He's from South Australia. He is really athletic. He ran a 2.93 for the 20 metre sprint, which is pretty good numbers if you're not 207 centimetres. He's a player that probably was a few weeks ago considered more of a uh, third to fourth round selection. Potentially now, Toomey is saying that Adelaide and North Melbourne have been linked late in the first round. I've also heard through the grapevine, West Coast are interested as well, which should be probably pick 29. So suddenly Taylor Goad's stocks have been risen from you know a late third or fourth round selection to potentially being in the early parts of the 20s. Now let's talk about Phoenix Goddard, a 178 centimeter small forward out of Victoria. Again, I'll admit this player kind of shot from nowhere. I hadn't really heard much about him until a few weeks ago. He was known for running the 20 meter sprint in 2.96 seconds, like I said. So that's, that's actually slower than Goad, which is crazy. He was second overall as well in the standing vertical jump test. So very athletic player for his small stature. So from previously being considered more of a draft smoky, at least that was the perception around those who followed the draft. He wasn't really considered, you know, a top 40 selection, to be honest. Now he's being suggested that North Melbourne and the Giants, who hold uh, what will likely become 21, 22, 23, 24, those kind of selections, he's considered a candidate for those picks as well. So from out of nowhere, Goldard could feature early in the second round. And to round out my list of six boulders, I'm going to go with another small forward, this time Cohen Sanchez out of Western Australia, 177 centimeter small forward who just kind of knows where the goals are. He's a good mark and lead player as well as a crummer as well. So the rumor through the grapevine is that Adelaide in particular have interviewed him a number of times in recent weeks. Adelaide hold picks 10, 14, and 20, nominally speaking anyway, which obviously I think that third pick could blow out to about 25, 26. So even at 25, 26, Cohen Sanchez would be considered a bit of a bolter because up to this point, he's been considered more of a late 30s and beyond selection. So we've covered the bolters likely to happen in this draft, and there's probably gonna be more, but those are the ones I nominated. Let's talk about some sliders, and no, I don't mean of the pulled pork variety. The first one I'll talk about is Dan Curtin from Western Australia. Now there's a chance this is not a slider, but I'm kind of hypothesizing here a little bit. So we know Dan Curtin is a 197 centimeter, sort of defender, roaming midfielder as well, uh, out of Western Australia. And in recent times, there has been a strong suggestion that North Melbourne have settled on McKercha and Dersma for picks three and four, which pushes Curtin down the order a little bit. Now, there's a chance he gets the Hawthorne at pick five, but they could go Nick Watson. You don't think that uh, the Bulldogs would pick Dan Curtin after picking Jed Buzzlinger in last year's first round, which leaves him potentially to slide to pick eight. And again, if the Demons have their own target in mind, there's a chance that he gets overlooked there. Could he be available to the Cats? Essendon or even the Crows. I've seen that suggested somewhere. I'm not saying it's necessarily likely, but this one has sort of developed in the last week or so. There's a chance that Dan Curtin could slide potentially all the way to pick 10 or 11. Staying on the trend of key position backs, let's talk about Ollie Murphy. Ollie Murphy is a 200 centimeter key defender from Victoria played for Vic Metro in the Champs and has actually voted their most valuable player in that team. And he was an All-Australian after the Under-18s Carnival. So as far as you know, resumes go for a key back, his stacks up. In recent times, he has kind of slid from being a top dozen kind of ranked player to now being described by Cal Toomey as likely to fit in the early second round of the draft than in the first, which is a far cry. He used to be sort of talked about up there with Conor O'Sullivan as one of the better key backs in this year's draft. For me, I think it's madness. I think Ollie Murphy looks like an absolute gun. So whatever team, if they picked him in the second round, gets him, I think that's an absolute bargain. Now we can talk about a Ruckman called Mitch Edwards from WA. There's a lot of Ruckman in this video, no real reason. He's 206 centimeters and 88 kilos. He had a very dominant start to the year for Peel's Colts side, averaging about 35 hitouts a game. He's pretty lightly built and you know tested pretty well athletically at the combine as well. Only 88 kilos, I don't know how recent that, that weigh-in actually is, but there has been some suggestion, according to Cal Toomey, that he might take a while to develop physically, which may have scared some other teams off, and maybe they prefer these other ruck types I've mentioned, Will Green, Taylor Goad. Rucks can also tend to slide based on how many teams actually need a ruck in terms of the marketplace as well. So there has been some suggestion now by Toomey. Mitch Edwards for a while was considered a first round selection. He's sort of ebbed away slowly, but he describes it as touch and go as to whether Mitch Edwards slides out of the top 40 altogether, which would allow Fremantle to match him as an academy bid. 
Then there's Ashton Moyer from South Australia, who started the year as one of the hottest prospects in the 2023 draft. He's a 180 centimeter, sort of medium marking forward from uh, Adelaide, or Glenelg, I think specifically. So to quote Cal Toomey from 12 months ago, he said, he's kicking on at both sides of his body like you've never seen before. He is one of the absolute contenders for the number one pick next year. So I guess to encapsulate the entire year, Ashton Moyer has slid from being probably not a chance to really beat out Harley Reid for pick one, but probably he was talked about as the likely number two at the start of this season. So he has slid down a long way. Now, there has been some suggestion that it is due to a hip injury. Potentially, it's also due to lack of application. Obviously, I've got no real idea. I had him sliding really late in my phantom draft, and uh, subsequently after posting that, apparently it's been reported that Adelaide and Carlton have a degree of interest in Ashton Moyer. You'd think Adelaide's pick 26 is the most likely. Carlton into the draft at what will become pick 28. They have another pick shortly after that. So maybe Moyer goes in the 20s or early 30s. I'm not really too sure. It's a little bit hard to get the read on Ashton Moyer to what extent clubs think his lack of form this season was due to circumstances out of his control. Not too sure. There is a lot of raw talent there. So he's one I'm intrigued to see where he goes. Then there's Lance Collard out of Western Australia and he kind of bolted and then slid again and bolted and slid. And it's a little bit hard again to get a read on where this guy is going to go in this year's draft. But he is a 180 centimeter small forward out of Western Australia. He kicked 32 go goals from 11 games in the Colts this year and then had a really, really good combine as well. He's just a goal kicking small forward, electrifying. I really like this kid. It wasn't so long ago that he was kind of considered a potential top 15 draft pick. However, as I've referenced in previous videos, there has been a little bit of a homesick suggestion with Lance Collard, which means there is a chance that he slides into the late 20s all the way to West Coast or potentially further to Fremantle. Again, I am speculating. I don't know how true this is, but I would feel that on talent, if there was no concern here with Lance Collard, he'd probably be going in the late teens on talent. So to some degree, he's going to slide a little bit in my opinion. And to round out this list of sliders that I've got, I've got another small forward. There's been real trends in this particular video, but let's talk about Jack Deline, a 181 centimeter out of South Australia, whose draft stocks have kind of plummeted in recent times for whatever reason. So he had two four goal games in South Australia's under 18 championships, which is pretty damn good going, you'd say. He's generally just had a knack for finding goals. He kicked 43 goals uh, this season at different levels, in South Australia, he kicked 28 goals as a bottom major last year. And as a 16 year old, he kicked 35 goals in 13 games for an under 16 side. So I'm quoting to me here with these stats, but that is really, really good going. And you think with that kind of pedigree, he would be going high in this year's draft. Now he's just slid a little bit. He was ranked by Toomey in September as being the 29th rated prospect in this year's draft. And he slid out of that in the most recent edition. So it's unclear where he goes, probably late 30s. But at one point, he was talked about as an early 20s, maybe even late teens selection. So it'd be interesting to see where he actually goes on draft night. But he's plummeted a fair way in the last four weeks or so. But anyway, guys, that is my take on some of the players that have either bolted or slid in recent times. A little bit different to predict who will actually bolt and slide on the actual night. The draft is naturally very subjective and every club will rate players in different ways. But I've had a crack, so let me know in the comments anyone I've missed or anything you agree with or disagree with in this particular video. As always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.